I'm going to introduce you to something called a polynomial regression. You will see that in some sense, it's basically the same thing as the other regressions we've been working with so far. But in another sense, it's a little bit different. So we have to work with the data in, or with the model in a slightly different way. Okay, and actually, I'm gonna, even gonna start by just reminding you of what a polynomial is. So a polynomial is basically any expression that looks like this, where we have uh, our data x, and then it's taken to increasingly high powers, and then we have some coefficients that are scaling the data. So a0 is uh, it's kind of not multiplying by x, but you could think of this as being multiplied by x to the 0. And then we have a1 uh, times x to the power of 1, a2 times x squared, blah, 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 up to a sub n, so some coefficient, some number, a n, times x to the nth power, and x is our data. Okay, so here are two examples of polynomial expressions. So you see this would correspond to a0, this would correspond to a1, 5 6 here would correspond to a2, and so on. Now, for a polynomial, you don't need to have every single x term in here, uh, you can just imagine that there, you know, so in this example, a sub 2 would be equal to 0. So you could, you know, think of writing 0 times x squared, but in practice, that's just left out. Same thing with, with a 0 here is also set to 0. So there's another concept in polynomials, which is called the order. So the order of a polynomial is basically n here. It's the highest coefficient. So this is an nth order uh, polynomial. This is a third order polynomial. This is also a third order polynomial. Sometimes people get confused about this because there's only two terms. But the order of a polynomial doesn't refer to the total number of terms. It refers to the largest exponent in any of the terms. So third order polynomial. Okay, so here's a, uh, a polynomial regression technically. This looks like the simple regression that you saw several videos ago. But so you can see this is beta 0 times x to the 0, which earlier I was calling out, uh, a 0. Now I call it beta 0. And now it's beta 1 times x to the power of 1. So this simple regression is actually nothing more than a first order polynomial regression. Okay, but with polynomial regressions, we can add more terms here. So we can have something like this. So we say y equals beta 0, the intercept, plus beta 1 times x, plus beta 2 times x squared, plus the residual term, and on and on and on. And so we can get this to be higher order. So let's say um, beta k times x to the power of k. So this would be a kth order polynomial regression. Now, here's a question. How can we fit this kind of model? Look at these nonlinearities. There's nonlinear terms, so you know these are here. X is uh, linear, but now we're bringing x to higher and higher powers. And didn't I say in the beginning of this section that uh, regression is all about a general linear model? So it has to be linear. So how can we fit this polynomial regression if we have these squared terms in here, which are and yeah, higher order power terms, which are nonlinear? Well, you have to remember the other thing I said about what needs to be linear and what can be nonlinear. So in fact, the coefficients are all linear. The betas are all linear. They are just being regular multiplied. There's no squaring happening to the betas. So in fact, it may not look like it initially, but a polynomial regression is a standard, regular, run-of-the-mill, vanilla, plain, general linear model. And that's because we're not doing anything nonlinear with the coefficients. It's just the data themselves that uh, are getting uh, raised to higher powers. Okay, so here is uh, what here you see two examples. This shows you when you would use a polynomial regression. So here we have our data. Looks like this. The blue circles are the data. Blue circles are the data. So you can see that a line is not going to be a really great fit to this data set. So this is a second order polynomial. So that means that this polynomial has the form y equals at, uh, beta 1, which is the intercept, plus beta 2 times x, which is a linear term, plus beta 3. Oh, wait, I, I'm miscounting my betas. <laughs> uh, anyway, beta 2 would be times x squared. And that gives us 
this quadratic form here. So this part, we need the x squared in here, the beta coefficient and the x squared in order to get this model to fit. And this would be a third order uh, polynomial, so you'll probably recognize the general form of x cubed in this data set here. So these would be the kind of data that you would use for a uh, polynomial regression. Now, of course, that leads to the natural question of what is the appropriate order? Because when you, when you set up a, a polynomial regression, you are given, so this x, this is one independent variable. I can, multi I can bring it up to any higher power that I want. We could go up to, you know, beta 1000 times x to the power of 1000. I mean, maybe that's a little high to be sensible, but you know, there isn't a real hard limit for how many powers we can include here. I suppose you could say that the limit would be when k exceeds the number of data points because then we can no longer fit the model. But that's only, a, it turns out to be just a soft constraint. So how do we know what, the, what order the polynomial should be? So that's a good question. Here you see an example of this data set that I showed in the previous slide with an order of two. So visually, this doesn't look good, right? I mean, we can, it's trying, you know, the, the model is trying to fit the data. It gets an A for effort, but you know, it, this is just not a, a good model. And here we have increasingly higher orders. So here we have a model order of 17. And I showed this slide actually in towards the beginning of this course. And this is something about overfitting. We are overfitting data. I'm going to talk more about overfitting in regression modeling soon in, in several videos from now. Okay, but so how do we know what is the appropriate order that we should use? This is uh, too small. The order is too small. Here the order is too large. We're overfitting. We're capturing too much of noise here. Okay, so the way that we go out about figuring out the appropriate order is through something called the Bayes Information Criteria. It's often just abbreviated as BIC. So this is Bayes Information Criterion. And so the idea is that this is a quantity that we can compute for every model order. So we get uh, up to k model orders, so we can compute k BICs. And this is a formula, so it's n, where n is the number of data points that you have times the uh, log, the natural log of the sum of squares of the residuals, and I showed you the formula for this quantity several videos ago, plus k, which is the number of parameters, times the natural log of n. Okay, so then what you do is you run through a bunch of different model orders, and you fit them all, and then you look at a plot of these BICs, and that's going to look something like this. So this is the BIC plotted as a function of the polynomial order. And then what you want to look for is a minimum point here. So the minimum point is the optimal model order. So in this case, that would be three, which is actually consistent with uh, these data. And in fact, I created these data as a third order polynomial plus noise. So it's no surprise that a third order polynomial turns out to be the best fit. Okay, so that's the Bayes information criteria. You fit the model with a bunch of different order parameters. So you, you rerun a bunch of regression models and you take the model that has the smallest Bayes information criteria as being the optimal model order. So in this video, I showed you um, how to interpret and compute and set up a polynomial regression.